Hey, I'm Chris, and thanks for joining me on this um, Ayoshima Ings Subaru Impreza. And uh, on this video, I've done something a little bit different actually this time. I'm going to uh, squeeze it all in, almost all of it in. Um, so, thanks for joining me, and here it goes. Starting off, we're looking at the uh, the body uh, all primed up. Uh, to be honest, I think it looks pretty cool in just a primer. Uh, but to get there, um, obviously, we need to get some prep work done first. Uh, and these pictures here are just showing the uh, the body's all prepped uh, and mocked up. Uh, the wheels, uh, they came uh, painted red. Uh, so they had a bath in uh, some Dettol fluid uh, to strip all that paint off uh, for a day. And uh, there we are, uh, the Dettol, and stripped it off. There's the wheels all primed up. Um, here's the cocktail stick with a bit of tape tied onto the spoiler. A lollipop stick with double-sided tape of the bonnet, uh, all primed up, uh, and there it is, looking lovely in just the primer. It's uh, it's different. Um, I think you know in the primer it, it shows off the angles quite well, uh, and I quite like it. Um, for those who I talk to on Instagram and stuff, uh, they'll know that uh, this this thing's body kit. I really like the aggressive style and it gives gives the body. Um, apologies for uh, this dodgy angle. Uh, but this was after I'd, I'd painted the white on the wheels and I actually used a bright silver base uh, on the body uh, because I wanted to do a, uh, a candy, uh, what was it, candy royal blue, I think it was, um, paint job uh, for this Impreza build. Um, but unfortunately when I was uh, laying the paint down, um, I thought in the can I had enough and just halfway through, near enough to the end of the second mist coat, I'd run out. Uh, as you see there, the, the silver the silver coat actually looks quite nice. Uh, this is after one coat of the Candy Royal Blue. Um, and, you know, it's just a very light coat. Um, once it's built up a few layers, you know, you need to get four or five layers. Um, it's quite nice. And this is only after the second coat. Uh, it got a bit heavy because the, the can ran out. And you can see there where the paint's got really heavy around the back of the arch and where the paint's pulled away from the panel lines where it's gone white again. Um, so here, what you see now, is I actually went over it with um, some sapphire blue. Um, I did one, maybe two coats of sapphire blue, um, and I really like this colour. It's a, a colour I've used in a previous Super Impressor build, the 99 um, the model. Um, uh, it's, it, and, yeah, I really like it, it's quite nice. So I thought, oh, lovely. Um, and I had just enough, just enough paint to do the body uh, sufficiently enough. As you can see there, the wheels are painted, um, primed and painted, gloss white. But here, as you see, uh, I pulled some paint off. I um, I attached just the one side of one of the Ings decals, uh, and when I pulled it off because I didn't like it, I ripped it. So I've gone for this new Skoda Race Blue. Uh, I thought it was a colour match to the Sapphire Blue, but it really wasn't, it was so far apart. Um, and you'll see here, just you can see the, the difference between uh, the race blue on the wing and the sapphire blue on the body. So, yeah, I was quite gutted. Um, but in the end, I just went and resprayed the whole thing. So I resprayed the whole car in in a, a race blue. Um, I think this video was when I clear coated it. I think. Um, or when I've just laid down the last uh, race blue coat. But either way, it's, it's, it's a lovely colour. I mean, as you can see there, the, you know, it's, yeah, it's quite reflective, obviously, because it's wet. Oh, it was, that was the clear coat stage, because uh, this is the cleared, cleared the bonnet look. And uh, yeah, this was just like minutes afterwards. Um, I was really happy with, with how the clear went down on this. Um, super happy. I mean, the, now the weather's getting better, um, I can take more time, uh, less rushing, and I can really get the clear coats down better. Um, and the weather's getting that now, so I don't have to worry about you know sticking them in front of the radiator. Um, but there you are, light off. Then this, the the light was on on the torch on the phone, and you can just see it pick up the uh, the light fleck in the blue paint. I just yeah, it, it, to, to be honest, after all the issues with the paint, um, I think it's ended up um, with a really nice colour in the end. Uh, super happy with it. And uh, these are the wheels. Got the wheels. Um, I, I know I've put a work decal on the, the spoke instead of a Volk racing, 
but the Volk racing wheels, uh, the decals were silver, um, and they didn't look right. So I know it's not right using the Volk at the work, but it was blue from a distance. You can't really tell. Uh, this is this is the satin black I use. I use it on the you know as you see there on the chassis, on all the small parts, all the interior parts, and everything else. And um, I, I go from there, detail it up. Uh, this is part of the exhaust pipe system. And with that, once I it's sat in black, a day later, I gave it a coat with this brilliant metallic from Plastic Coat. Um, I think for you know your exhaust pipes and things like that, I think it's a great paint. You just can't touch it for a few days. Uh, again, same here, as you can see, front sub frame, the headlight housing, and the wiper blades and wiper blade housing, they're all in satin black. All the parts here in satin black. You know, you've got your steering rack there, steering wheel, you've got all your centre console bits, you've got the area for the roof. Uh, we'll be honest, I lost that somewhere, I don't know where it went. Uh, and that bit in the middle, that's my wedding ring, that's the uh, the like the intake there, where it goes under the scoop, under the bonnet. And it's, it is a bit of a cheating way to do it, but with a you know, spray can, um, you get a nice even finish. And uh, you know, I, I do that. Uh, it, a, it helps speed up the process, and B, it's like I said, it's even. It gives a nice even finish because uh, I don't have an airbrush. Um, I used to sit and brush paint everything sat in black. But the problem is with brushing, you just don't quite get that smooth enough, flat enough surface. And I just really wanted to try and uh, get a nice, smooth, uh, even finish. So I, I just one day decided to pick up a sat in black can and just give it a go. And I can't remember when I did it or what the first model was, but ever since then I've been doing it. And as you can see here, that sent um, the dashboard unit. I think it was one, maybe even two coats of satin black. The seats, satin black, everything. It's just you know, it it just gives a nice even uh, looking finish. Uh, sometimes as well, if I want to detail them up, um, you know, it's not too bad because a lot of the time on interiors you use you, you know you use a lot of greys, silvers, golds, chromes. So over satin black, it's. Uh, it's not, it's not too much of an issue to try and um, paint over, really. Uh, but to be fair, I really didn't do much, too much detailing in this Subaru uh, because I was using these smoked tinted windows. Um, and you'll see that in a bit. Uh, this is the interior tub, uh, just the back seat centre console and that rare, you know, like shelf tray area. Uh, what I did is I actually used... Um, oh, here you are. Just showing off the, uh, the, the... I think this was about a day or two after the clear coat. And it dried, and you can just about see the reflection of the light where I pulled the paint off. When I masked it off, I did sand it to 600 grit uh, to try and feather the edges, smooth it out. Uh, I thought I did all right, but lo and behold, when I painted up, it, it still shows. But it's not not too visible, fortunately enough. Um, but as you can see there, that colour, the colour, I'm just yeah, really happy with it. So as I was saying, back to the interior tub. Uh, Elmer's glue and some embossing powder. Elmer's glue, I just straight down neat. No watering down, just get a brush, straight down, and it goes. I do one section at a time, so I did that right hand side, for example, then I did the left hand side, uh, then I did the back. So I don't do it all at once. I just do one side, lay the PVA down, sprinkle the powder on, let it set for a few moments, then do the next side, and knock it off. Uh, there, I've, I've tried to go for an anodized look on the wheel nuts. Uh, what I did, I uh, painted the nuts chrome, or was it flat aluminium first, and then used the clear right over the top. Um, the only problem with these wheels is the tyres. The tyres are, are stretched. I'm not really a big fan of stretched. I like a full width. But anyway, all that's pretty much done. Uh, now we're going to get this bodywork polished up, and as you can see there, the, the, the three bottles of uh, polishing compounds and waxes. Um, I got from a mate. He says, here, you know, try these out, see how you get on. Uh, he's given me some more o uh, triple polish before, and I really liked that stuff. Um, and as you see here, getting that reflection in the clear coat, it's quite orange peely. I think from what I can gather, it's quite normal for um, spray cans. And, you know, just trying to catch the light. So you can kind of see this bit and then see the comparison later on. Um, and you can see there the, uh, the, the orange peel under the spoiler as well. Now, with this, same as every other build, I only use the P2500 wet sandpaper. Uh, first off, with the roof, it's not, you know, 
it's not all in the same direction, but I was trying to get around that raised area on the roof there where the, uh, the antenna will go. Um, so I, I, it was a little bit here and there above it. Uh, this was after two applications, I think it was, of the uh, Poor Boys Super Swirl Remover. Um, already after two applications, it looks fantastic. I was really happy with that. Um, and then I, I like to do the roof first, see how it looks. I don't just get around, you know, wet sand and everything else. That's why it seems out of sync. Uh, but no, you know, this bit, I've this, this sanded it down. So you can see, I've tried to get rid of all the, uh, the raised spots. Uh, there shouldn't be any shiny spots on, uh, on that area. There is bottom right, bottom left, where it's, it's recessed into the bumper. I didn't touch that area because I didn't want to really burn anything. But the main top lip, uh, and again on this spoiler, you can see where I've just tried to sand it and get it a nice flat across the side. Uh, on either side there, you see the two sink marks. I wasn't going to you know, lose sleep and try and get them at the risk of burning through. Uh, same with the bonnet. I've tried to get where I can without risking burning through. Uh, on the side here, well you can see where that bit of paint, paint pulled off was. Uh, but again, I've tried to get as best as I can, as close to the edges as I can, and as smooth as I can. It, it's, it's not 100%, but I, I feel it was um, a sufficient amount. Um, it's, it's especially around the raised curved areas. Um, just got to be really careful because the paint's at its thinnest. You don't really want to sand it and then uh, you know burn through. Um, because you've seen my poor attempt at trying to uh, mask off and touch up. Yeah, it's not the greatest. So uh, although it's not fully sanded 100%, I'm, I'm not willing to take a risk to burn through. I, I'm, I'm happy, and you'll see the results um, shortly. Um, I mean, I do take my time. Uh, you know, I think the whole, I think the whole wet sand. I did the wet sand, the super swirl remover. I did some Technic uh, nano composite polish, and I did some turtle wax. Uh, I think that's in total was about six, seven hours for all four stages, really. Uh, as you can see here, this is the whole body um, after two applications. Maybe actually, I think actually, no, it's three or four applications actually. The super swirl remover. Um, I get a little bit OCD. I just like to make sure got plenty um, on and I've, I've tried to get rid of as many swirls as possible and uh, as you can see here it's just um, yeah it's worked an absolute treat it's really come up uh, that orange peel has gone and as you can see you know all the sanding or the marks is near enough gone but already I think this is only after the super swirl remover applications already it's made such a big difference to it and it's really brought that paintwork to life um, and the the fleck in the paint as well. I was really happy with the way it's worked out. Uh, this race blue, it's got such a lovely main colour and a light pearly blue fleck in in that paint. Uh, I just think it, it looks absolutely stunning. And yeah, just you know, as you can see there on the spoiler, there on the on the bonnet, it's come up really well. Uh, oh yeah, that was after the Technic actually, the, the nano composite compounds actually because uh, this is um, I've just applied this high gloss uh, car wax if it's got a cosy on it if it's got a cosy on the foot picture it must be good enough <laughs> uh, but anyway you know so I've applied this with a um, wax application cloth it uh, doesn't soak it up it allows it to actually stay on to the body panels itself so I've just applied this as you can see a bit vigorously and plenty of it uh, so what I was going to do is just uh, leave this to kind of almost dry and uh, once it's all dried after, I think I gave it half an hour, I think. Uh, once it had all dried off, um, it, it gave like a, a hazy finish. Here you see, it's kind of hazed, dried, um, almost like icing really. Um, and Yeah, I don't know why it is. I don't know why with polish you can apply it and buff it off straight away. And then with the wax you apply it, let it set, then buff it off. I don't know, I'm not sure. Uh, but you'll see the final results of that later on. Here, we're going to get down to actually putting some of the parts together for the build. Um, with the great thing with this kit is you've got two height settings. Um, you've got A, which is the lowered uh, height for the model build, and you've got the B setting, which is just for the standard. Um, so you've got to be super vigilant um, at the start when you're looking at um, applying the brakes and the um, suspension. 
because there's, there's small little items that will adjust the height. For example, on the front suspension, it has these small round um, washers as such that can sit either side of the, the suspension arm, uh, depending if you want it lowered or hired, uh, standard height, sorry, standard height, sorry. Uh, whereas on the rear, the disc brakes on the rear, there's two sets of disc brakes on the rear. You've got a standard set and a lowered set, where basically the, loca the locating sockets on the back of the disc are set at different heights and angles. So it'll just adjust uh, the, the, the sitting uh, of where the wheels sit. I will be honest, um, I tried for this video to make sure I got as much of the assembly as I possibly could. Uh, but sometimes when you're just getting it, you know, when you're working, you're getting your zone, you just get into your comfortable position. And I ended up doing most of it off camera, unfortunately. Um, but here, this is, you know, straight up. We're just getting this, the, the discs onto this, the suspension struts. And all I'm using here is just some normal plain super glue. Um, I use it for you know, the chassis work, um, in, interior as well, because you don't really need a lot. You just need little dabs, dabs, dots here and there. And I just find it works fine. You don't have to scrape any paint off uh, to use a bit of cement. And I wait for that to fuse and set. Just super glue. It's just, it's just just done instantly, isn't it? It's, it's, um, and as long as you don't go mental with it, you don't get really any haze. Um, it, yeah, it's, it's good. I like using it. It, it is what it is. Um, so I found uh, the assembly for this kit um, pretty good to be fair. You know, once I've got the um, the height uh, the height I wanted uh, and selected all the parts um, and made sure those were all in, in order as such, uh, put it together it was quite simple. Uh, there wasn't too much for this build on the chassis. Um, as you can see there already on the chassis, main chassis part itself, uh, most of the exhaust system is already moulded in. Um, and that front subframe, the only the only downside really with that front subframe, uh, skid pan as such, goes over the front there, is it hides the locating pins on the front of the chassis where it needs to go into the front bumper. And when it came to assembly, it was really quite difficult. Um, the actual front shape of that subframe skid pan, it, the shape didn't quite match the shape of the front bumper. Um, so it was quite difficult. Uh, but again, because it, is, it, it, it hid those locating pins, uh, the kit asks you to put the rear in first and then the front. And at first, it, I couldn't see it. And without risking popping the bumper off or breaking something, it, was, it didn't quite sit properly. Um, in the end, I did actually take off the body and fitted it from the front and then apply, um, got the back end in afterwards. So I did it in reverse. Um, it was tricky getting the rear in, but it was easier than trying to get the front in after the rear. Um, and it, it, is it still as perfect as what it could be? You'll be the judge. Um, I'm happy with where it is. Um, you'll see in the pictures and some videos later on of the, the height and how it sits. Um, don't think I actually got a video of it because um, I, was, I was so focused and trying to concentrate I was not trying to break anything I didn't actually record trying to get it back in properly um, as you see here as well with the parts I uh, just dry fitted everything make sure everything fitted right uh, popped everything into place made sure I was getting the right area uh, once I was happy remove it apply some glue and reapply the part uh, simple as that and like I say, you know, it's, it's there wasn't much to the chassis uh, for this build, um, but what there is, you know, I, I was happy with it. You know, it's not all moulded in. It, it, there is some bits, and um, yeah, it, was, it, it all fitted nicely. It all fitted nicely. Like I said, the only downside was you can see it just you just saw it just there with the, the, the actual skid pan subframe sort of thing. You hid the there. You could just hide the locating pins. Um, so it could be quite awkward. I think what, I'm, what I, I don't know if it would work or not. Could you get the chassis into the body and then apply and fix the bumper afterwards? So remember correctly, the bumper had to be fixed onto the body, then apply the chassis. But the chassis, where that locates into the body itself, is behind the grille, which is on part of the main body and not the bumper part. So it could be possibility of 
applying the bumper once the chassis and the body are both mounted. Um, I'll be honest, I won't, I won't, I won't be, uh, I won't be against uh, building this kit again in the future. I really like it. I do. It's, uh, it's, 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 you know, the parts it comes with, you know, clear windows, smoked windows, other deck owls, adjustable height, the look, the fitment, um, bar the chassis bit. Uh, yeah, you know, I definitely, definitely look at um, picking this up again in the future. I, I don't mean like in a month or two, but you know, maybe in like a year. Um, sometimes I like to do some of my favourite builds, uh, build them. Uh, you know, you know, eight, ten, twelve months later, uh, build them again, uh, see how uh, they can compare from last build to you know new build. And you know, I, I think I've you know spoken to a few builders who like to do that as well. They like to uh, rebuild what they built before and then enjoyed. And you know, you can kind of do a bit of a comparison and just see how far you've come. Really, uh, here the uh, the little washing up liquid trick. Uh, so applying the washing up liquid. Back of the wheels uh, and on onto on the the pin into the disc as well, um, and on they went. Now, although these wheels uh, were not in the box with this kit, uh, there was aftermarket. There was still Ashma wheels for this Ashma kit, uh, and there was no problems getting them on at all. Uh, absolutely fine. Uh, they see, look, there's the chrome parts that go into the headlight housing. Uh, they sl slotted in really nicely. And I just added a touch of clear blue onto the headlights itself. Headlights itself, should I say. Uh, it went together fine. Um, like I say, I, I do apologise. I have missed quite a fair bit of this build. Um, I wanted to get it, most of it on, on camera. But unfortunately, as you can see, I'm, I, I tend to work quite close to my chest. Uh, I work close to me myself so I can you know, get a better visual on it. Um, I just have to, have to start adjusting the camera and all lighting, I think. Yeah, but there we are, we've got the seats in, uh, we've got the gear stick, handbrake lever, and one of the door cards in. Painting the chrome, it wasn't the neatest of jobs, but once them smoked windows in, you're not really going to see it. And you've got the main dashboard unit in, uh, but this, you can see there the sat nav. Uh, so it's not over detailed, it's not going crazy, but it, I think there's a subtle amount of detailing. You know, I, I think it was just enough. Uh, and here, just putting on the... Uh, fan off your deck house and there we have it it is finished uh, as you can see now you know the light uh, bouncing off the the bodywork after all you know the the polishing um, I'm incredibly happy super happy um, you know like I said before I love the styling of this body kit for this impressor it just gives it such an aggressive look um, and I think you know, the, the colour, obviously it's a Subo, it's blue, it's match made in heaven. Um, the wheels, I did go for the 18 inch wheels, probably should have used the 19 inch wheels just to fill them arches up a little bit more. But if you can look on the front wheels there, you can see there's quite a gap between the wheel and the arch. And that's because it didn't quite sit as, as, as well as it should have really. Uh, but here we have it, the final photo shoot pictures. Um, I'm going to leave you to look at these um yeah thanks for watching thanks for sticking with me sorry for waffling on um i won't be doing the the whole build in one video all the time it's just this one it's just been a super quick build it's been only been what, shy of two weeks roughly um so here we have it um so yeah yeah thanks for watching again um let me know what you think in the comments below and uh, my next video i'm super excited to get it up and i can't wait to share it with you all uh thanks again all the best. Look after yourselves. Cheers.